All right, let's start on the adventure of programming. I take it you've used programs already. You've played games, you've surfed the web a bit. Those are all programs someone else has written. Now we're going to learn how to write our own programs. Our programs will start out simple, but they'll get pretty good and interesting if you stick with these tutorials, and you'll figure out how to start writing your own programs as well. For our first tutorial, we're going to make a program that tells a joke. A knock-knock joke, to be specific. Go ahead, take a moment now to think of your favorite knock-knock joke. Pause the video if you need to. You got one? Great, let's get started. Start up your browser and type this into the address bar, scratch.mit.edu. Now we'll go to this page, which is the Scratch programming page, where we will be doing all our work. I'd suggest here that you join Scratch. You'll create a username and pick a password. You'll also need to provide an email address in case you forget your password. Get your parents help with that if you need to. Make an account allows you to save your work and that's useful if you want to come back and keep working on things. It also helps you build a library of different programs. But it is okay if you don't want to join now either. We can still do this project together. If you don't want to join right now, click on the create button right now. If you are going to make an account, pause the video now, make the account by clicking on join scratch, then continue the video after your account has been made. Once your account has been created, when you come back to scratch.mit.edu, you will just log in. I let my browser remember my username and password so I don't need to always type it in. And now I'm logged in. And this is our Scratch home screen, which shows a lot of other projects that people all over the world are working on. Later on, we'll explore those, but for now, we're going to make our own. So, just like if we didn't create an account, or we weren't logging in again, we're going to hit create right now to make our own application. This launches the Scratch environment, where we'll be doing all our work. Scratch is a great environment, one of my favorites. You can do a lot of things here, making animations, interactive stories, even games. And my tutorials will show you how to do all those things. Today, we're going to start off with an animated story, like we said, telling a knock-knock joke. And our main character, the Scratch Cat, is going to be telling it. You see the cat on the left-hand side of the screen. This area on the left is the Scratch stage, where all the action happens. In the Scratch environment, think of yourself as the director, and the characters are all acting out your instructions. We just need to be careful and give good instructions. And all those instructions are in the middle of the screen. They are grouped together, and different groups have different colors. There are a lot of them, and we won't cover all of them today, but over time, we'll cover a lot of them. On the far right of your screen is where we put the instructions that we're giving the director, or giving as the director. If you didn't create an account, over here, you'll see this expanded list of tips here. And these are great tips and a lot of useful help in here. If you have the free time, I think it'd be a good idea to read that. But right now, we want to give our cat some instructions so we can get rid of this list and give us more space by clicking on the X. Bring it back by clicking on that little question mark. You might notice that when I click, some rings and circles pop out. I'm doing that to help you see where I'm clicking. This is to make it e easier for you to follow what I'm doing on the screen. My mouse is probably bigger than yours is too. Again, just to make it easier for you to see. Don't worry if your mouse isn't doing the same things or doesn't look the same. So, when programmers start a new language, it's a tradition to write a simple hello application to show that they're able to use the environment and everything is set up okay. We're going to do the same thing. Our first action is going to be able to make the cat say hello. But saying hello isn't a type of motion, and you see those motion blocks are the ones that we currently have selected. Let's look around and try and find something that might work. The next blocks are the looks blocks. Click on them, and you'll see that we've changed the purple blocks. And let's see if there's anything useful there. 
any of those command blocks look like they might do what we need them to do? Yes. Let's try the first one. To see what it would do, you just click on the block. You'll see a little yellow outline around the block to show it's being run, and you'll see the cartoon word bubble for the cat that says, hello. All right, we did it. The traditional program has been done. We know how to work with this environment. The cat said hello. But we want to write a knock-knock joke. So let's keep going and customize this a bit for our uses. To do that, let's pull this brick over into the workspace. So click and drag and pull it over here. And now, again, just to make this a little easier for you to read, I'm going to magnify mine a little bit. Select the text for the hello, and let's change that into knock knock. Now, if we click on this block for the cat, the cat's saying knock knock. Great. Progress, but now it becomes clear we're missing something. We need another actor, another character. And in the Scratch programming language, our characters are called sprites. So let's come down here to new sprite. And if you hover over that little picture, you'll see that we're going to create a sprite from the library. And Scratch comes with a lot of sprites that we can choose from. These are all different characters and actors that we have that we can put into our program. There are a lot of them, and you can take some time right now and scroll through the list if you like to see the characters that are available. When you're ready, if you go on, let's just click animals, and let's choose an animal for the cat to tell a joke to, and let's choose the crab. So select the crab and hit OK. And now you'll see the crab is there on top of the cat maybe a little too close to the cat. So let's see how we can move them around on the stage. Put your mouse on top of the crab, click and drag. Put your mouse on top of the cat, click and drag. Move them around to about where you think is right for them and where you're happy. I think that looks pretty good for me. So, now we have them there, and the cat is saying knock knock, but our crab is not doing anything. And you can choose or select and see what each of your actors is doing by clicking on them down here in this section below. So let's do the same thing and give our crab a little block so he can talk back to the cat. And instead of saying hello, what do we want our crab to say? Who's there? Type that in, click on that block, and our crab says who's there. And this works, except it seems hard for them to both do their parts. And it reminds me of how in a movie, there's the director that will yell action and then all the actors start to act, play out their parts. We have that same thing here in Scratch with a green flag and the stop sign. A green flag is like the director yelling action and starting everything off. So let's click the green flag and nothing happens. Well, okay. And that's because we didn't tell our crab or our cat to do their things when we say action. And we can do that though by clicking on this events block and choosing this first one that says when the green flag is clicked, we want our crab to say who's there. So let's select that and pull it over and drop it in right above the other block. And you see now there's a little outline there and they snap together like Legos. That is to say that 
when the green flag is clicked, the crab is going to say who's there. Let's do the same thing for the cat. Grab when it's clicked. And if I drop it over here and the two aren't connected, then when the green flag is clicked, the cat's going to do nothing. Well, let's try that out right now. Let's click the green flag. Only the crab is doing his part. <laughs> so let's connect the knock knock block with the green flag. Try it again. And now they're both starting when we hit the green flag. But now that's a little bit of a problem that they're both starting when we hit the green flag. How can we fix that? Now, I know how to fix it and I know how to write this program well in the first part, but I want to show you what the process is like so that later on you start to see how you can fix these problems if you run into them on your own. I don't think the best way to show you how to program is giving you the perfect finished one. Instead, we're going to walk down and we're going to see some problems with our programs and learn how to fix them together. So hit the green flag, crab, cat, both talking over each other. Which one should go first? Yeah, the cat, because the cat has to say knock, knock, and then the crab has to wait a little bit and then say who's there. And we know how long the crab has to wait. Two seconds. So let's go look in these control blocks. Let's see if there's any blocks here that could help us. Yep, that first one looks good. It's going to wait a second. So, oops, we don't want our cat to wait a second. Let's select our crab. And let's see if he can wait a second. And you see when I put it in right in between those two, it'll pop up and it's like putting a block in between two other blocks and it fits nicely. And now if we run this, our crab is a little bit better. It waited one second, but we needed to wait two seconds. So let's drag it in again. And now it'll wait one second and then another second. And that looks pretty good. Okay. So after the crab says, who's there? What happens next? Our cat needs to deliver his joke or the beginning of the joke at least. So let's select the cat and we're going to say what our knock-knock joke is. So I'm going to say, old lady. And if we run this, we get knock-knock. Who's there? What? But they're talking over each other again. Why is that? Yeah, our cat needs to wait as well. Just like the crab waited, the cat needs to wait. And now you see, we've been changing the text of what the cat says. And you can see that it looks like we can click on this area that says how long to wait. So let's wait two seconds. This way we don't have to do two blocks of one second each. We can do one block of two seconds. Let's run our program now again. That's our action. Knock, knock. Who's there? Old lady. And so now we have to go back to the crab and update the crabs program. And the crab we know has to wait two seconds. And then the crab will say it's part of the knock knock joke. We can run that again. Action. And now our cat will finish the joke. We'll wait two seconds again. This is where the crab is saying his response of old lady who. And our cat says.
his punchline, her punchline. Who's there? Old lady. Old lady who? Hey, I didn't know you could yodel. And that's it. Our knock-knock joke's been told. It wasn't too hard. We had to coordinate the two actors a little bit. But that's just the way they were telling the story. And that's part of programming, is making sure all these puzzle pieces fit together. And that's what I really find fun about Scratch, is that you're really looking with puzzle pieces, making them fit together to do what you want. Okay, let's just try a couple more block types. Um, because maybe the cat is a little happy at the end of telling its knock-knock joke. And it wants to do a little dance. And the easiest dance I know is just to spin around. So let's try that. We get the cat here. And in motion, there are these turn blocks. Maybe we can use turn somehow. And that turns the cat. But we don't want to just turn once. Let's go back to control. And you see this repeat block? It has something that looks like a mouth. And what happens is anything that's inside that repeat block's mouth is actually repeated. So if we put the turn 15 degrees inside there, and we click on the repeat, you'll see the cat turns 15 degrees 10 times. Okay, let's add that to the end of the joke. And let's maybe change 10 to 60. So it turns a little bit more. And let's try action on that. Here's our punchline. And then the cat celebrates and does this little dance. Oh, but it's ended up upside down. If we do action again, what happens? Oh, the cat is talking upside down. Well, that's another little bug that we have. That's something we can fix pretty easily. Oh, he's right side up again. All right. But since sometimes the cat's going to be upside down, and sometimes the cat's going to be right side up, one thing we can do is whenever we yell action, make the cat go and be right side up. So the first thing it's gonna do is point in direction 90, which, trust me for now, means the cat will be standing straight up, and then it'll say knock knock. So I think this is a pretty good first little program. Um, we've learned a few different types of blocks. We learned how action works and we've learned a little bit about how to synchronize and add a couple synchronize actions between a couple different sprites a final touch would be to name it so that we know what this program does in our library we could name it first program but that doesn't tell us much about what it does i think we should call it knock knock and then save it and you just change its title up here Calling it knock knock. And you can save it with the save now. It's not very important right now with one program because you know what your one program does, but when you get to have tens and hundreds of programs, it will make a difference. And I do and hope you end up writing hundreds of programs.